Hello again. Let's do lab 200 about file I.O. First of all, let's look at readfile.py and see how really easy in Python it is to read a file. Let's see. In our main, we're going to print this file. And notice that the file name is a string. File names are relative unless you put in a slash to make it absolute. And so there should be that file on disk in this directory. Then I print a new line. And then I try again with absent file. We see that we have the output of that little file. And for the absent file, we're told there is no such file or directory. Looking at print file, the file name comes in. Now you see we have a try except. And in this exception, we're collecting any OS operating system errors that come out. So that will collect anything that can come out from opening and reading a file. We'll get some info about it with the as keyword and we'll print that. In this try except, we're going to do a new keyword, the with keyword. The with keyword is for handling resources. For example, a file with and then you give it, well, a context handling class, which is the open. We'll learn later what that really, really means. But the built-in class open, you feed it a file name. And in the with context, comes back an open file object open for reading. And it has the label on it, open file. So now we have that open file, and we're doing this magical thing on line 8, where we are for looping through an open file, open for reading. And what do you suppose comes every time around that for loop? One line at a time. Very handy and useful. There are other methods you can use on that open. but we're doing the for loop, and that is pretty usual. We'll print each line. And you'll notice that I have to change the end to be nothing because the line still has a new line on it. And then the print would, learn, would put on another new line if I didn't stop it. OK, that's what we did. When we unindent out of the width, then automatically the file gets closed. Errors are all handled with only that whole chunk of code raising OS errors, if anything happens. Very nice facility, very easy. It used to be, and it still could happen to you, you might need to be outside of the width in a lower level language view. So we'll do the same thing. So let's just see how that goes. Once again, we're doing the try except, but we are adding a new keyword, the finally keyword. Whatever you put in that block of code, this try will happen. If it succeeds, it'll go in the finally. If it fails, it'll go in the except and then go in the finally. Finally is going to happen. Now, really, the reason why I want to show you the raw way to read a file is so that you know about that finally keyword. I can't think of a more straightforward way to use, finally, except in reading a raw file. So here we are opening our file name. And what comes back from our open call is that file object that we collected before with the word as. OK, now we go through it every time doing the same thing. And we have an OS error. Now, here's the issue. If this open didn't raise an error, then in fact, it will be open and close will be good. But if the open could not happen, then the right side of the assignment never happened. And so this identifier never came into existence. And so down here, file object close, there is no file object identifier. And it'll tell me unbound local error. And I don't want anything to happen there. I just 
Oh, okay, I just want to collect it and go on. That's fine. So, that's what happens. If the error comes out here, then yes, we have the file object and it'll close. But if it's on line 6, then there's no file object. This will crash, but we don't want to close it, so we pass. That's to introduce you to finally. Let's read and write a file. We're going to read the same file, but we're going to capitalize it and write it again. So into our main comes romsu.txt. Now then, it's unusual to import except at the front of your code, and that's everybody's style guy. But sometimes it makes sense. Maybe this cap file, maybe this read write file module is a library I'm giving to everybody else. And they will not be running my main, they will be running my cap file. And they have no interest in the import of OS for this cap file that they'll be using. So I put it here so it won't be happening. There won't be that little extra bit of processing. That's why I did it. Style guides are meant to be broken, but you have to have a good excuse. All right, so we're going to have that starting file, which is a string, come in. So I can R split it one time on the dot, and I get two pieces, the extension and everything else that came in. All is one string. And so I'm going to make a new file, and I'll use string manipulation to make that new file name. It'll be the same name. But I'll add on to that underscore caps. The dot is because it came out of the situation in the R split. So I stick it back in here and then I add the extension. So that will be my new file. I open the starting file as a read file. I nest in another with where I open my write file name as a write file. And then for each line in the read file, I read it and I use the write method to write it to the write file. Notice that when I open the write file name, I had to give the mode. Default mode is R or reading. That's why I didn't have to give it here. It's the default. But if I want it to write or to read and write or to append, I have to give a different mode. Alrighty, here we have that the line has a new line on it, and so I do not need to add one when I do the write file. The write writes exactly the string that is given. Nothing more, nothing less. Here we see I did a call to OS system, and I catted the new file, and that string of the new file came back to me from that call. There it is. Here we have some notes about file. To get these notes, I did a help on the open class. And here it tells me, built-in function open. Well, I know it's really a class. Okay, what should we look at? You get, must give a name, and there's nothing else you must give. The default mode is R, as we saw for reading. And we delete a lot, so you can look there to see all the other modes. But write and append and reading and writing together, which is R+, are the popular ones. We can see that one of our optional arguments is encoding, because we're very concerned with the Unicode. And there are so many encodings or methods for changing from Unicode bytes and storing them into files. If you import your locale, which is a library that responds to where you are, you can ask for get preferred encoding. And I see that my preferred encoding is UTF-8. Probably true in all English speaking countries. Once you open a file for reading, here are some other things you have available. You can do a read, 
with nothing in there, and you get all the text as one long string. That is dangerous to do unless you know for sure that this file is short. Otherwise, you're putting all that in memory. You can do a read and say how many bytes you would like to have read. You can ask to read one byte. And that's pretty common that you might want just one byte at a time to come in, and then you push that byte along the socket or whatever you have to do. You can do read lines. Well, I don't know why they don't deprecate this. You can do read lines, but you might need that sometime for something. But if you do read lines, the result is a list of strings, each of those strings being a line. You can ask to read one line. Now, this is the for loop that we saw. We have that file object. We for loop through it and get one line at a time. It's a miracle. It didn't used to be in the language. And instead, we would do this. We would read lines and then look at it one line at a time. But as I said, this puts the whole thing in memory. It's so inefficient compared to the built-in iterator. So this is what you want to do. When you have an open file object, no matter how you opened it, you can manipulate the physical read-write header. You can say current position equals, there's your file object, and you give a tell call with a pair of parens, and that'll give you how many bytes you are in the file. Zero will be in the first byte. If you want to move the position, of the read-write header. You can say seek, and that will move it. You say the offset, and maybe you want it from the beginning of the file, which is zero, or you want to move it from where it is now, or maybe from the end of the file, where you will be using a negative offset. You can ask when you have your file object is it closed? What was the last mode it was opened in? And this is a really useful one. The file object knows the string that is the name of the file on disk, what it was given to open it. That can be real useful. It saves you setting an extra identifier. If you open a file for writing, and here, or appending, or R plus for reading and writing, then you can write, and then you give it a string. Or write lines and give it that list of strings. OK, you're on your own to try some exercises. I'll see you when you've had enough of that.